Well, it's a holiday you might not have ever heard of, Bunsen Burner Day. No, no idea. It's actually tomorrow, but we're celebrating early at Imagination Station. Let's head out there. So, oh boy, Sophie, what are you doing? You know what? That's a really good question for our chief scientist, Carl. Carl, what, what is going on here? I love the ambience. So we, we are celebrating Bunsen Burner Day, March 31st. It's the birthday of Robert Bunsen, credited with developing the Bunsen Burner, standard laboratory burner that every chemistry student is familiar with. Right? Amazing. So, you know, it turns out back in 1855, Bunsen was working on studying different elements and trying to identify their characteristic colors. You might want to put those on. Yeah. We have open flames here. And he needed a burner that burned hot mm -hmm. and cleanly. If you look at these flames, these are not very good uh, uh, flames. They're actually, they produce a lot of soot. If I put this over the flame, just like your fire at home, you're going to get lots of black soot that's going to come off and coat the bottom of our beaker. Okay. And so for Bunsen's work, this doesn't work. Okay. So inter interestingly enough, he turns to his lab assistant, Peter Tasaga, and says, build me a better burner. And the saga does not disappoint. It had this genius moment of, so this is a Bunsen burner, so the gas comes okay. in this way and comes up the chimney and All combusts right. at the top. The saga's genius was to put these little slots at the bottom to allow the fuel to drag in more air, pre-mix with the fuel, and then burn hotter. Look at so, that. In this case, if I, this one's a little bit different, if I let some air pre-mix, we get a beautiful hot flame. Okay. Now, the, All right. the thing that uh, Bunsen was trying to do was study different spectra from different materials. And this is a classic demonstration that uh, students still do in chemistry today. Nice. It's called the flame okay. test, and we're going to do it here. So I have different elements in these tiny beakers, and what I want you to do is just go ahead and bring this stick, go grab, grab a stick, and bring it near the side of the flame, just near the side of the flame. <gasps> you guys, yeah. okay. look! So this is strontium. Strontium chloride, and it creates sort of a reddish flame. Joe, try the next one down. Okay, okay. This is sodium or sodium chloride. We get a yellowish flame. And so Bunsen's work was actually to do the first systematic study. Keep going. Yeah. We have potassium, which, you know what, yeah. looks. Let's do, that's okay. Let's do both at the same time. You do potassium, okay. I'll do. They look similar, but they're slightly different. More purplish, more yellowish. Okay, and then okay, finally okay. lithium at the end. Right. So his work was the first systematic study of identifying these different elements and their spectra. He actually took the light from the flames, run it through a prism, and then you can see the individual lines that are produced by that combustion. This is so cool. So what, what's the purpose of all this work? Well, for instance, if you can identify the material in that flame using what's called spectroscopy, you can identify what materials the stars are made of. You can identify what elements are in the are you joking? atmosphere of planets. That's incredible. That's so it's, it's, it's a widely used idea, spectroscopy, and you can do it in different ways. But all starts with a Bunsen burner. It really does. All the colors of the rainbow, like right here on my coat. Thanks so much for sure. chatting with us, Carl, letting us know about Bunsen burner day. I'll send it back to you guys. Awesome. Th thanks, Sophie. Be careful. Open flames awesome. are abound. Here. <laughs> that was awesome. Glad you have two sets of glasses on. Bunsen burner. Safety first and second. Uh, yeah. How was uh, you? What was the question you brought up about the Bunsen burner? Oh, I said, you know, he said he turned to his assistant yeah. and asked him, fix the problem, and that, but it's not named after the assistant. Yeah, well, that's, that's the good thing about being in charge. <laughs> <laughs> You're the guy that gets named after.